Hello and welcome to another edition of Crafting for Fun. I have an awesome project to share with you today. This was inspired by something that I saw on Pinterest and I was so taken with the project that I just went right away to my craft room and had to experiment with making one for myself. This is a, uh, I'm going to move this aside, this is a bottle of hand soap. And believe it or not, this is a $1 bottle of hand soap from my local uh, craft store. They also sell similar bottles at the Joann's store. Uh, or you can buy the uh, name brand uh, bottle of soap in a similar size at Bath & Body Works. And then it just has a beautiful decorative tag on the front and some ribbon detail added to the top. This would make a wonderful gift for uh, people at Christmas time, uh, especially if you have many, many people to buy for and you're on a limited budget. So let me gather my things and I will show you exactly how I made this project. To create today's project, you'll need the following items. You'll need a piece of cardstock that measures 2 and 1 quarter inches by 7 inches, and I have scored it 2 inches from the end. You could use whatever color of cardstock coordinates with your soap dispenser. This is Melon Mambo, and it coordinates with the soap that I purchased. You'll need a strip of uh, sparkly silver paper. You could also use sparkly gold, but this piece measures one and a half inches by four and a half inches. And I have two pieces of Whisper White cardstock, one that measures approximately three by three inches, and one that measures one inch by three and three quarter inches. The smaller is for stamping the sentiment, and the larger is for stamping the focal image. I'm using Melon Mambo ink because that coordinates with my cardstock, so you'll need an ink that coordinates with your cardstock. And you'll need some stamps. I'm using a sentiment stamp from the More Merry Wishes stamp set by Stampin' Up. I'm going to use this Merry Christmas sentiment. And then you'll need something for a focal image. I chose to use this second from the smallest, so not the smallest, but the second from the smallest snowflake in the Festive Flurries stamp set. I do not believe this stamp set is uh, available anymore. It was from last year's catalog, but the thing I love about it is it ha also had framelits that were coordinated with it, so that makes it very easy to cut them out. If you don't happen to have this item, you could use uh, a snowflake that you cut out with a silhouette or a Cricut cartridge. Uh, you could use one from another manufacturer or even from a punch. There are just lots and lots of snowflake uh, images with coordinating dies or punches. So uh, something like that. And then you'll need some ribbon. I'm using a piece of Melon Mambo and a piece of white ribbon and each of these is about 18 inches long. And then I chose to uh, stamp my second, my smallest snowflake uh, to use um, as an embellishment and I stamped it with Versamark and heat embossed it with silver embossing powder and then heat set it. And I'm going to be do some, doing some trimming on this to use as an embellishment so I'll come back to that in a moment. But let's get started. So I'm going to begin by stamping first. So I'm going to set all of my other pieces aside and put my two pieces of white cardstock down. I'm going to open up my Melon Mambo ink. And go ahead and ink my my stamp up really well. Let's see if I can get this straight. Pretty good. Merry Christmas. Upside down, but that's okay. <laughs> and then this is my snowflake image. And I'm just going to stamp it right in the center. Good contact all the way around. And lift up. And I'm finished with that. So I'm ready to put my ink away because I'm completely finished with that. Now I need to bring in my Big Shot so I can cut out my snowflake image. So let me grab that. Here's my Big Shot machine and I have a magnetic platform. Now I happen to have some small uh, plates, clear embossing plates, but the larger ones work just fine. I just find these easier when I'm working with small pieces. So I'm going to set my snowflake that's stamped on top of my uh, clear acrylic pad. Actually, let me go ahead and get this kind of lined up and show you first. So I'm going to just move my um, snowflake die around until I have it lined up the way I want it. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and set it down. And this is a magnetic platform, so it's going to help hold everything in place. So once I get it positioned, it's not going to move very easily at all. And that's exactly how I want it. So I'm going to put a second clear acrylic plate on and roll it through. And this marvelous die made this project so simple by cutting out a very detailed image for me. So there's my snowflake. So I'm completely finished with my Big Shot machine. So I'm going to set it aside. And like I said, I stamped another snowflake. This happens to be the silver one. And I stamped it uh, on uh, just a scrap of white paper using my uh, Versamark ink. And then I went ahead and poured some silver embossing powder on it and heat set it. Now this, I didn't actually do this one today. I actually have this one left over from an earlier project. So if you um, do a project where you're heat embossing something like snowflakes and you have some extras, just set them aside because at some point I'm sure that you will find a project that you can use them on and that's exactly what happened here today for me. A lot of times if I have uh, images like this that are left over after I finished a project, I put them in the case with the stamps and that way it reminds me when I open the case up that uh, I already have part of my work done. A little time-saving tip from me. Okay, I'm almost finished cutting out this center section. There's like a star shape in the center and I want to use that to embellish my project. So I'm going to turn that over, just that little star shaped center, and add one foam dimensional on the back. And then I'm going to apply that right in the center of my snowflake. So let me bring that closer so you can see what I'm doing. So right there in the center of my snowflake. Then I'm going to turn the whole snowflake over. And I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals on the back and set that aside. So now I'm ready to begin constructing the rest of my project. I'm going to take this piece, the largest uh, piece of cardstock, and I'm going to fold it along the score line. Now this two inch section here, so it's two and a quarter wide and two inches long, is where I want to punch a hole. I'm going to use a one and a quarter inch circle punch, but you can experiment with the size of punch that works best for the soap dispenser that you are using. I actually tried a one inch circle punch and that would have worked for my soap dispenser, but it was a very snug fit. So I'm using a, a one and a quarter to give me a little extra room. I have that centered up from side to side and centered from top to bottom as best I can. And I'm just going to punch that circle out. And there we go, that's where the neck of my bottle is going to fit through. So I'm going to fold that back, and I'm going to bring in my sparkly silver piece. And I want to fishtail the end of that. So I'm going to cut in, in the center, about a half an inch. And then I'm going to go to the corners, and I'm just going to cut up to that little point. And there I have a nice fishtail tag, and I'm going to turn that over, and I'm going to grab some adhesive here in a second, as soon as I find it, and apply that. So let me grab my adhesive, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my adhesive, and I'm just going to apply some to the back of my sparkly silver strip here. Oops. And then I'm going to put that right in the... I'm going to start there at the fold and I'm going to center it from side to side. I'm just going to have it go down towards the bottom. So that's there, and now I'm going to take my snowflake image, and I'm going to add it near the top, just not past the fold, and then I'm going to take my sentiment here, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did on my silver paper. I'm going to fishtail the ends, only this time I'm only cutting in about a fourth of an inch because my piece is considerably smaller. There we go. And now I'm ready to go ahead and add that. I think I'm going to use, no, I think I'm going to use tape. And you want to add your tape only in the center because this is going to extend slightly over the sides of your project. Just kind of get it straight there. There we go. 
and now I'm ready to add that to my soap dispenser. So I'm going to bring back my soap dispenser, slip that over the top, oops, and now I'm ready to go ahead and do my ribbon. Now that the tag is in place and finished, I'm going to apply my ribbon. So I have two pieces of ribbon, both about 18 inches, and I've stacked them on top of one another with the pink one on top. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm just going to wrap it around, and I'm going to cross my left over my right and pull them through, and then just tighten them both up together. And then this is how I do it. You might have an easier way, but I make a loop. My pink, my pink ribbon is on the top and my white ribbon is on the bottom. And then I make another, I go around that one with the piece on the opposite side, but I do it so that the white piece is on top and the pink piece is on the bottom as I cross it over. And then when I pull that through, I'm going to move that aside. And then when I pull that through the center, you'll see that the pink piece is now on top again. So I should end up with a bow. I'm going to adjust the size here. I should end up with a bow where the pink, where the loops both have pink pieces on top and the center, the knot in the center essentially is white. And that was exactly what I was going for. Kind of a candy cane effect, but I wanted both halves of my bow to be the same. So now I just kind of fiddle with my loops and I want to separate them a bit and you can adjust them for size and so I'm going to separate them, oops, separate them a bit and I will tell you that the bow is absolutely the fiddliest part of this project but it really does add a lot to the finished project so it's worth taking a little time to fuss with and now I'll turn that back around and I'm going to leave my little streamers to hang off the side here. So, let's show you the finished project here. Whoops. There we go. So I have a beautiful tag and a, and a, a two-colored bow uh, that coordinates on a nice jar of soap. What an inexpensive, lovely gift. Uh, these would be great for teachers or co-workers co at your office or just uh, neighbors, but it's a nice way to say Merry Christmas without breaking the bank. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you have any questions, just email me at craftingforfun at gmail.com or check out my blog for more crafting ideas. Hope to see you back here soon. Bye-bye.